Hey there, history buffs and myth enthusiasts. Today we're diving into the dusty and mysterious world of ancient cities and epic tales. Our destination? Troy, a place that has captured imaginations for centuries. Is it real? Is it a myth? Grab your shovels and let's dig in. Troy, a city whispered about in ancient texts and immortalized in Homer's epic poems, has been a source of fascination for as long as its legend has been told. Was it a real place? Or just a figment of someone's imagination? That's the million-dollar question and believe me, people have been arguing about it for centuries. The story of Troy is a wild one, full of love, war, heroes, and gods. It's a tale that has been passed down through generations, inspiring countless works of art, literature, and even Hollywood blockbusters. But behind the myths and legends, there's a real archaeological mystery waiting to be unraveled. So, join me as we journey back in time, sift through the ruins and separate fact from fiction. Get ready to explore the legend of Troy. Now let's talk about Homer's Iliad, the epic poem that put Troy on the map, so to speak. It's a story of love, war, and revenge, set against the backdrop of a ten-year siege that brought two powerful civilizations to their knees. The Iliad tells the story of the Trojan War, sparked by the abduction of Helen, the beautiful wife of a Greek king, by Paris, a prince of Troy. Imagine the drama. This act ignited a conflict that drew in legendary heroes like Achilles, Hector, and Odysseus. Homer's words painted a vivid picture of the Trojan War, with all its brutality, heroism, and tragedy. We hear the clash of bronze, the cries of fallen warriors, and the lamentations of heartbroken lovers. It's powerful stuff. But here's the catch. The Iliad is a work of fiction. It's a poem, not a history book. So, how much of it is based on real events? That's the question that has kept historians and archaeologists busy for centuries. Enter Heinrich Schliemann, a German businessman with a passion for archaeology and a head full of Homer's epic poems. This guy was like a real-life Indiana Jones, obsessed with finding the lost city of Troy. Schliemann was convinced that Homer's tales weren't just stories, they were based on real historical events, and he was determined to prove it. Armed with a copy of the Iliad and an unwavering belief, he set out to find the legendary city. Now, Schliemann wasn't a trained archaeologist, he was a self-made man who had made his fortune in business. But what he lacked in formal training, he made up for in sheer determination and a healthy dose of, let's say, enthusiasm. In 1870, Schliemann began excavating a site at Hisarlik in modern-day Turkey. He believed this was the location of ancient Troy, based on his readings of Homer and other ancient sources. Talk about a leap of faith. Schliemann's excavations at Hisarlik were nothing short of groundbreaking, literally. He dug through layers of earth and rubble, uncovering the ruins of not one, but several ancient cities built on top of each other. Imagine digging in your backyard and finding the foundations of your grandparents' house. Then below that, the remains of a Roman villa, and even further down, the remnants of a prehistoric settlement. That's what Schliemann was dealing with at Hisarlik. Among the ruins, Schliemann unearthed a treasure trove of artifacts, pottery, weapons, jewelry, and even human remains. These finds provided tantalizing clues about the people who had lived and died at this site over thousands of years. The discovery sent shockwaves through the world. Could this be the legendary city of Troy, lost to time and buried beneath the earth? Schliemann was convinced that he had found it, and his discoveries ignited a firestorm of excitement and debate that continues to this day. Section 5, Layers of History, Troy's Many Cities. Schliemann's excavations revealed that Hisarlik wasn't just one city but many, each built upon the ruins of its predecessor. It was like peeling back layers of a cake, each layer representing a different period in history. Archaeologists identified at least 10 distinct layers at Hisarlik, spanning thousands of years. One layer, Troy Saitha, dating back to the Late Bronze Age, caught Schliemann's attention. This layer showed evidence of fire and destruction matching the Trojan War descriptions in Homer's epic. Section 6. Evidence of War, Treasures and Destruction Okay, so we've got layers of cities, but what about the war? Did Schliemann find any evidence of the epic battle described by Homer? Well, he found something pretty interesting. A layer of burnt rubble, shattered pottery, and scattered weapons. This layer, as we mentioned, is known as Troy Thea and it dates back to the Late Bronze Age, the supposed time of the Trojan War. Now, finding evidence of fire and destruction in an ancient city isn't exactly unusual, 
but the sheer scale of the destruction at Troy Zetha was pretty telling. Schliemann also unearthed a cache of gold and other precious artifacts hidden beneath the ruins of Troy II. This treasure, which he dubbed the Treasure of Priam after the legendary King of Troy, included jewelry, weapons, and other valuable objects. Now, while the Treasure of Priam is no longer believed to be associated with the Trojan War, its discovery added to the allure and mystery surrounding Hisarlik. It was like something straight out of an Indiana Jones movie. Section 7. The Mask of Agamemnon, Fact or Fiction Speaking of treasures, we can't forget to mention one of Schliemann's most famous finds, the Mask of Agamemnon. This golden funerary mask, unearthed from a grave at Mycenae, another site associated with the Trojan War, was hailed by Schliemann as the face of the legendary Greek king. Imagine the headlines. A German archaeologist digs up the face of a mythical king. It was a story that captured the imagination of the world. People were on the edge of their seats, eager to learn more about this incredible discovery. The mask, with its stern expression and intricate details, became an instant icon, a symbol of the lost world of the Trojan War. It was displayed in museums, featured in books and documentaries, and even inspired works of art. But here's the thing. The mask of Agamemnon isn't actually from the time of Agamemnon. Modern dating techniques have shown that the mask predates the Trojan War by several centuries. Oops! Section 8. Doubts and Debates. Challenging Schliemann's Claims. Now, while Schliemann's discoveries were groundbreaking, they weren't without their critics. Some archaeologists questioned his methods, arguing that his hasty excavations and lack of proper documentation had damaged the site and compromised the integrity of his findings. Think about it. Schliemann was basically a kid in a candy store, digging up ancient treasures left and right. He was so excited about his discoveries that he didn't always follow proper archaeological protocols. Others pointed out that the evidence linking Hisarlik to the Trojan War was circumstantial at best. Yes, there was evidence of fire and destruction, but that didn't necessarily mean it was the Trojan War. Ancient cities were often destroyed and rebuilt. Moreover, the dating of Troy the Aetha to the Late Bronze Age, while suggestive, didn't definitively prove that it was the city of the Trojan War. The debate raged on with scholars and enthusiasts alike taking sides. Section 9. Beyond the Myths. Analyzing Troy with Modern Archaeology. In the decades since Schliemann's excavations, archaeologists have continued to study Hisarlik, using more sophisticated techniques and scientific methods to piece together the site's long and complex history. Modern archaeologists are like forensic detectives, carefully analyzing every shard of pottery, every burnt timber, and every skeletal remain. They use ground-penetrating radar, aerial photography, and other high-tech tools to map the site and uncover its secrets. Through their meticulous work they've been able to refine the chronology of the site, identify different phases of occupation, and gain a deeper understanding of the people who live there. They've also uncovered evidence of trade, diplomacy, and cultural exchange, providing a more nuanced view of life in Bronze Age Anatolia. While Schliemann's methods might have been rough around the edges, his discoveries paved the way for generations of archaeologists to study Hisarlik and unravel its mysteries. Section 10. The Enduring Mystery, Separating Fact from Fiction. So, after all this, what's the verdict? Was the Trojan War a real event? Did the city of Troy actually exist? Well, the answer is, as with many things in archaeology and history, it's complicated. Here's what we can say with reasonable certainty. Hiserlik was a real place inhabited for thousands of years. The city went through multiple cycles of destruction and rebuilding, and it was an important center of trade and culture in the Bronze Age. Whether or not one of those destructions was caused by the specific conflict described by Homer in the Iliad is still up for debate. The evidence is suggestive, but not conclusive. The Trojan War, as described by Homer, is a blend of myth, legend, and perhaps a kernel of historical truth. It's a story that has captured our imaginations for millennia, and it continues to inspire debate and discussion today. Section 11. The Legacy of Troy, A Timeless Tale. The story of Troy, whether historical or imagined, resonates with us today. It's a tale of love, loss, courage, betrayal, and the human spirit. Characters like Achilles and Hector have become archetypes. Themes in the Iliad, war, family, fate, remain relevant today. The search for Troy shows our fascination with the past. 
Troy is more than a name, it's a timeless story.